So I've got an interesting one for you today. Uh, here we have GM full-size cluster. Uh, oh, it's probably an 03, 04, 05. It's a diesel. Uh, this one's interesting because it has over 700,000 miles on it. So I'm curious what the inside is going to look like. Uh, although we do need to note it has the Delphi remanufactured stickers on it, so it's not original. It has been gone through at some point in time. And it also has had LEDs installed by batteries and bulbs. I think they used to be the batteries plus. But uh, I'm, yeah, it's got some bum LEDs here. Probably some uh, cheapos from eBay or something. But we got the blink LEDs and a lot of them aren't working anymore. Anyways, I'm curious uh, how the soldering job, how the workmanship is from the battery store. And uh, I can tell right now either we have some bad stepper motors or really sloppy uh, calibration too. I'm just trying to get it to reset here. Yeah, it must must be a 2005 board in here. Yeah, the calibration is terrible on this thing. Let me let me do a full reboot here. There. Yeah, this is a 2005 board because it takes so long to get it to zero out. Anyways, calibration is sloppy as heck. They're, uh, they're all reading high except for the oils reading too low. I think there's something up with that stepper motor. Yeah, so the battery store was a little sloppy at putting the needles back on. Uh, I can tell we're going to have some fractured solder joints for the display and the LEDs are now garbage. Anyways. Let's open it up and get started with the repair. And yes, it is a 2005 board. And I've seen the style of LEDs before, definitely. Okay, well, let's get a little, get down in here, huh? Um, this, I'm just checking out the side. Oh, they, they changed out. See, I, I never really like putting an LED in the place of the cruise control or the blinkers, and they did. Uh, they either didn't know that's what these were, or they just wanted their blinkers to be blue, too. But the soldering job on the LEDs is not the worst I've seen. The only my only gripe is the random uh, direction placement of the LEDs are just kind of shooting off in random directions. But gosh, for being a this must have been a very early Delphi rebuild. Let me just see if there's any dates on here because they don't even have X25s in here. They have the old bad XC5s. So this must have been very, very early rebuild, which tells me this cluster probably does have over half a million miles on it. And considering that, it's not too shabby looking. It's a little, a little yellowed. That's probably from the incandescent bulbs. They kind of do that. But let's look at the, uh, the tin whiskers. And it's surprisingly clean on the back. I won't have to do too much scrubbing on this one. In fact, surprisingly, no the uh, no tin whisker growth on there, hmm. or uh, what they call it, silver migrations, what all the new kids are calling it nowadays. Okay, looks like I'm gonna go ahead with the rebuild process here.
All right, now at this point here, I'll give it a quick check before I go any further. Making sure each LED is working. And let's get in a little bit closer here. Now there is a method to my LED tilting. I have slight tilts on some of these, especially these four over here, and I'm doing that on purpose to direct the light at, my, my goal is to direct the light at the center of the scales where the uh, batteries plus original install with the LEDs, I just kind of had them all kitty wampus pointed all over the place. Uh, now these are single chip LEDs. They're not going to be as bright as the guys I took out. Uh, but these are brighter than factory. The single chip uh, 5 millimeter LEDs I use match the factory intensity pretty much spot on for the most part. And in case you're wondering what these little guys are here, it's to direct some light down into the corners of the mile per hour because the LEDs are more directional than the 360 degree incandescent lights. So otherwise your corners will be dim. So now uh, I'm gonna give the, the screen a quick wipe down, but so far everything's looking good. So I'm gonna continue with reassembly. The last place I'd had this apart left some scuff marks on the face from, they may have used a fork to get under there to get the needles off, but unfortunately these aren't, scuff marks are there permanently. I usually try to not mess with this little display window just because of how easily it scratches, but this has three quarters of a million miles worth of gunk on it, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. Now for a quick sweep check, calibration check, making sure each dial starts right on the notch except for the mile par and RPM need to be a little bit below. Looks like I do need to make an adjustment to the fuel. It's not quite on the left side of the dash like how I like to see it. All right, I made just a slight adjustment to the fuel and my stupid lead jumped off. Come on. Okay, now it looks spot on back to factory spec. Now I'm going to give it some, uh, some serial data and then some RPM and mile per hour data. I'm going to do a reboot here. All right, we have a communication. And let's check mile per hour and RPM. Yeah, we're good there too. All right. Well, the repair and rebuild is complete. Shut off, shut down the lights here. See, we've got the blue LEDs. Nice even backlighting. And the LEDs are not overwhelmingly bright. Just got to check the trip button here, but it feels good. Sometimes the top of the trip buttons get broken off. If people aren't careful removing the lens. They put too much pressure on the little stick here and break off the top. All right, everything checks out. Uh, I guess that's it. That's what a rebuild and what the inside of a cluster looks like.
with 700,000 miles plus on it. And uh, I was actually a little impressed. It looked better than I was expecting. But uh, gosh, I think this one's done. So thanks again, guys, for watching. See you next time.